smothered brother. My uncle, my uncle was. We are precise operation here. We start at 10. <laughs> 10 by his watch. <laughs> well, by Apple, by Apple, what Apple says. Steve Jobs will tell you what time it is. <laughs> we'll tell you how to vote, and Steve Jobs will tell you what time it is. Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday. Just a brief word of welcome to all of you. If you're here for the first time today, we don't normally do this. Uh, today is a special day of Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, so welcome to that. A reminder that if you are new, we'll ask you to fill out the Friendship Register when you get inside, that's on the aisle. So just a word about how this will work. We will have parts of our service here, and then during a hymn, we will process in. The order of that procession will be that, um, well, we'll follow El Presidente here, um, Harvey, and then the congregation will process in and then followed by the choir. The idea here, okay, is that you will then be in there when the colt, it's at Christmas it's a donkey, but, it's, but today it's a colt, um, when the colt goes in as a symbol of the arrival of Jesus. So we'll be in there as the people of Jerusalem. We're welcoming Jesus with our palms. We'll be welcoming the colt with our palms as well. So that's the idea. Oh, sorry. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed him to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray as we bless the palms. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed a Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who care them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we may enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing. Blessed is the one who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace, in, in the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite the congregation to be seated and I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Come on. All right. Hello, hello. So, welcome. Thank you for your help, by the way. Thank you for that. Um, let's talk a little bit about what happened and why we did that. Um, have any of you ever seen the President of the United States? Like in person? Oh, no. No. Um, what about the governor? No, okay. Well, I was, it was interesting. I was in Atlanta a few weeks ago visiting my dad and my plane got delayed because the president was taking off. They were like, no, the president's taking off, so everything has to stop. When the president drives around in cars, it's the same thing. I watched a video of the president going around, and this is what was, it was a line of cars, all for the president, okay? There was a police car, and then another police car, and then another police car. Uh-huh, and then there were two limousines. And then there were three SUVs. And then there were four vans. And then another police truck. All of that for the president, right? That's 18 giant cars. It's so much I had to write it down and make notes, okay? Well, what do you think maybe they did for important people in Jesus' day? Any guesses? I'll give you a hint. They waved palms, that's right, they waved palms. And they did other things in our story, like they laid their coats on the ground. And they rode in on a colt, which is a young horse. Um, that was what they did. So that's why we did this today. It's a, it's a way of saying that Jesus is our, is our king, and he is our ruler, and so we're recognizing that and acknowledging that. So when you take these palms home, remember that the reason we have palms is it's a way of saying that Jesus is our king, and we're getting ready for him. Right? We're getting ready for his arrival. That's what they did back then. So let's remember that, and let's pray. You repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our king. Help us follow you. Amen. Awesome. Thanks for coming up, and you can take your palms with you. And those who are going to Godly Play are with Miss Tammy right there. And otherwise, you can return to your seats. Those who remain, I invite you to rise as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join in the Kyrie. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. 
the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. second reading is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. 
I invite you to rise as you're able and join in singing the hymn. It's number 343 in your red book. to be seated. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of pure nard. She broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But there were some who said in anger, Why was this ointment wasted this way? For the ointment to have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. You will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before, beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be remembered of then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the corner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. 
make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went, in, went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. The disciples began to be distressed and say to him and to one after another, Surely not I. Surely it is not I, my Lord. It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man will go as it is written of him. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Hey, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. Then he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the body until the day when I will drink When they had sung hymns, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even though all will become deserters, I will not. Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock grows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, my Lord, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and he began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And after going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not as I want, but what you want. And he went back to where Peter, James, and John were and found them sleeping. Simon. Are you asleep? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial, for the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to say to him. He went away a third time, and upon returning he said, Are you still sleeping no. to keep your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See my betrayer is at hand. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. The betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. As Jesus approached the group, Judas went up to him, and he kissed him, and the guards laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. <coughs> Well, let the scriptures be fulfilled. All the disciples deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. The guards caught him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. The guards took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes assembled. Peter had followed at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and was sitting with the guards warming himself at the fire. 
Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false testimony against him, and their testimonies did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with two hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood before the assembled group and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? Why is it that they testify against you? Jesus was silent. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with clouds of heaven. Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? And all of them condemned him to death. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and began to strike him, saying, Prophesy. Prophesied. The guards took him away and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by, and when she saw Peter warming himself by the fire, she stared at him. You were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth, weren't you? I did not know or understand what you are talking about, Nazareth. As Peter was walking out into the forecourt, the cock crowed. The servant girl, on seeing Peter again, began telling those around her, This man is one of them. Again, Peter denied it. This time, one of the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time, and Peter remembered that Jesus had told him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders, scribes, and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, who asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests continued to accuse Jesus of many things. Again, Pilate asked him, Have you no answer? Look at the many charges that have been brought against you. But Jesus made no further reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. There was a man named Barabbas who was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. The crowd came and asked Pilate to do for them as was his custom. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed over Jesus. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Then what would you have me do with this man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him! Crucify him! But the crowd shouted all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate did as the crowd wished. He released Barabbas, and then after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus out in the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. They stripped him of his clothes and put a purple cloak on him. They twisted some thorns into a crown, which they put on his head, and they began to salute him. Hail, hey, King of the Jews! They struck Jesus in the head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him, and they led him away to be crucified. While en route, they compelled a passerby that was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, casting lots to decide what each should take. 
It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. And those who, were, and those who passed by derided him. In the same way, the chief priests and the scribes also mocked him. He saved others, and yet he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that he may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard him, they said, And someone ran, filled a sponge with some sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to Jesus, saying, Then Jesus gave a loud cry and took his last breath. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who stood facing Jesus, saw how he breathed his last breath, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph and Salome. They used to follow Jesus and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When the evening came, Joseph of Arimathea went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, wondering if Jesus was already dead, summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus was dead. When Pilate learned that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph brought a linen cloth and, taking the body, wrapped it and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, saw where the body was laid. Redemption were 
Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. You are invited to remain seated, if you wish, or to rise for prayer. We'll begin our prayers with three deep breaths and by singing our prayer response. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Unite your people in bearing witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. We pray especially for St. John Lutheran Church in Farmington Hills, for those preparing for baptism, and for all who are grieving, especially the family and friends of Bill Barton, Patricia Hook. Ron Klinick, Herb Lewis, Linda Schreckengost. Comfort all people with resurrection, resurrection and hope, God of grace. good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of our foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. Establish peace and justice among the nations, especially Haiti, Ukraine and Russia, Palestine and Israel. Hold to account those in authority and grant the courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion, God of grace. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. And we pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love and for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially Paul, Eileen Clements, Candace Dart, Chuck Hunter, Guy Karecki, Bob Seeky, Russ Kettleson, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. heart. God of grace.
Blessed One, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace now. The offering plate is to the right of the door as you exit the sanctuary. There is also a QR code on the back of your bulletin that you can use at your convenience. God, our provider, you have not not fed fed us us with with bread bread alone, but with words of of grace and life. Bless Bless us in these your gifts, which which we we receive from from your bounty, through through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able and join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Please be seated. The ushers will direct you when it's your turn to come forward. You'll come forward up the center aisle, take a cup. Then if you'd like to have communion at the rail, please come up here and kneel. Otherwise, proceed to the, to the sides. You'll receive the bread, and then the wine is in this chalice, and the grape juice is in the clear one. If you're communing at home or at your seats, please take your kid out now. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. We begin with those who cannot come forward.
eyes as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Compassionate God, you, you have, have fed us, us with, with the bread, bread of heaven. heaven. Sustain, Sustain us in our, our holy week, pilgrimage. May our, our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms the making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Descending hymn, you're invited to sing along. It will be verses 5 and 6 only, please. go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 